I'm Jean Cedarblade, and I live in Pepin, Wisconsin. And I'm Art Cedarblade, and I live at Pepin, Wisconsin, too. <laughs> Excellent. I was born in um, the village of Pepin in a house on August 23, 1941. Parker, where were you born? I was born in uh, Plum City, Wisconsin, uh, January 12, 1938. I was uh, delivered by a midwife, Alice Shrewth. You were born where? In the hospital. I was born at, yeah, at Plum City in a hospital by Dr. Anderson, his name was at that time. So. Mm -hmm. okay. I grew up in, um, up till age five in Bogus Valley. And then it, uh, when I turned five, we moved to Lost Creek Valley, where my folks had purchased a farm. What about you? I grew up uh, north of Lund on a farm with my folks and I stay I was there until until we got married and which was for about 20 24 years that I was that I lived with my folks on this farm and it was on uh, highway 183 uh, about two miles out of Pepin, and my dad owned 525 acres. He had built a new barn in 1945. And I lived there until I uh, graduated from high school and went to Minneapolis to work. It was a small farm. My folks, they just had a small farm, so it was 120 acres. and. Raised chickens and milked a few cows and had a few pigs and that was about it for for my growing up there on the farm with them. Okay. My mother, Florence Lumberg Millerin, uh, was born in uh, by midwife um, in their house on uh, County I on a farm. Or she grew up on a farm also, and my dad was born by midwife in their house in Bogus Valley, and his name was Bud Sidney Millerin. My mother's name was Ruth, and she was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And, and my father, Clint, was, I don't know where he was born for sure, but mm -hmm. it was in Wisconsin, I imagine on the farm. I, I would presume on the farm where, where his folks, because he just took over the farm okay. From where his folks were, so I presume he was born there. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one sister, Marie, and one brother, Donald. Oh, Marie is seven years older than I am, and Don is four years older than I am. So I'm the baby of the family. Okay. No. My grandfather was Alfred Lumberg, and he was born in Sweden, and came to this country at age three. Um, he, I, I believe he came through Ellis Island. My grandmother, uh, Othelia Hagland Lumberg, was born in Mazeppa, Minnesota, and I was very close to her. My grandfather died when I was four, and my grandmother died in 1958. Parents, well, I don't remember. They, I, I don't remember. Rem I don't remember them at all because, and their uh, their names were. Hmm. By G. Do you? I don't remember now what they were. Halda. Halda. Halda yeah. was a. Halda. Uh, Halda and Elf. I gotta help him. That's fine. Uh, uh, Halda. Halda and um, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, I believe it was Andrew. Yep. And they yeah. they were they died before you they were born. Were, yeah, they were. So I. That's all I know is their and, names. And, and, they, and, you, and then Fred and Caroline Swanson. Oh yeah, that was on my mom's side. Yeah, yeah. I do remember my mother's uh, dad because he would—he was living yet as I was growing up. You know, a little. And what? what do it wasn't he a um, s um, smolder or what? What do you call it? Well, uh, he—I don't remember. He done some kind of. A, well, I tell you, it was some kind of a molds. A brass molder. out of brass. He was a brass molder, but that's the only—the only one of my grandparents I can remember. My father's parents were um, Emma Yonke Millerin 
and the grandfather was Philip Gauz Millerin. And I'm not sure where they were born. I'd have to go back in the records and look at that. Mm -hmm. But, and I never knew my grandfather on my father's side because he died before my parents were married. And my grandmother, I barely remember her. I was just a, a very small child when she died. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what year that was. So my great, great grandfather was Samuel Millerin, and he was at the, fought in the Civil War, and he was at the surrender of Lee at Appomattox Courthouse. Really? So I thought, that's very interesting for the grandkids. Exactly. Oh, as a kid, yeah, um, yeah uh, let me see. Rita Lumberg-Rosen and I were, and Helen Bringelson, Rayburn, was, uh, Three, uh, there's three cousins, and we always <clears throat> played together as kids. And there was a, what would you call it, between the silo and the barn, what was that like? What would, what would you call that? Well, it was. It just where you connected the two, yeah. where, where they would put silo down through yeah. it for the cattle. Well, the upper part we used as a playhouse, and... We were never supposed to open up this trap door because it went right down into the silo room. Well, we were playing, sweeping, cleaning out. I opened up the trap door, was sweeping stuff down where I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and I stepped backwards and I fell down through this into the silo room and hit my head on the cement. Knocked myself out. And Rita went, Ro Rosen went in for my mother. And she came and she was very upset with me because I had damaged my new, brand new jeans. <laughs> she didn't care about my being knocked out, but, <laughs> but that's what I remember of, of uh, playing in that. It was like a playhouse for us in this upstairs of the silo room. As a, as a kid growing up, of course, being alone, you know, I never had brothers or anything to play with, but. I would play with the neighbor, the, a couple neighbor boys that would, we'd come back and forth, ride our bicycles back and forth, and, and uh, we just played like any young little boys play with, like clay guns or clay tractors or whatever, you know, and um, then as the years progressed, of course, and I, you know, then we got up to a, old enough to get cars and that, and of course then the, fun, then the fun really began. What about your wizard bike? I did have a, I gotta tell you, I did have a wizard, what they called a wizard motorbike at that time. And I thought that was quite a thing, you know, to have a motor on a bicycle, and, and it was fun. I mean, I had it for quite a while, but it got so, so wore out towards the end that if I went to see one of the neighbor boys, I had to carry extra rod bearings with me because uh, they would burn out before I got to his place, and I'd have to, maybe that's kind of the start of my overhaul or my mechanic business, I don't know, but it was fun. It was fun. We had, we had a lot of fun. It didn't have a lot, but we still had fun, so. You used to race on, with uh, your bicycles, though. So. Oh, yeah, we would race with the bicycles, too, because we would, you'd always ride if the neighbor boy would come over and play with me, well, then. I would ride halfway back with him to his place, or that we just did that. And of course, I was, we were going down a pretty steep hill, and it was gravel. And he started going by me, and I didn't like that. Well, I, I started pedaling faster, and of course, I lost control of it. And going down a hill on a bicycle, I scunned my whole arm. Wasn't the nicest thing, but <laughs> I didn't want him to get ahead of me. <laughs> Other than that, I guess, I don't know. That's. I had fun growing up with what little I had. That's it. I had to take care of the chicken chores at night, um, feed them, gather eggs, um, also uh, wash the milking machines at, uh, a lot of times at night. I uh, didn't have to do it in the morning, but done it at night. And um, just help feed, as I became older, I would help feed uh, the cows, 
when my brother was gone to the service, that was my job was to help in the barn, basically. So, yeah, we had chickens and pigs and cows. Everybody had about the same back yeah, then. Yeah, a lot of yeah. was. Oh. And when they butchered, you, the dad would cut the head off the chicken and he'd hand it to you to stand there while it was shaking, you know, <laughs> before it quit shaking. And, you know, we would butcher about 75 roosters at a time for winter keeping. But we did not have a bathroom first when it was growing up. We had outhouses. So did <clears throat> yeah, we watched it. And they, the charmin of the day was when you'd get peaches, they would always come wrapped in a, a, a yeah. nice, smooth pink. E each peach was wrapped. Each yeah. peach was individually wrapped. And it was a pink, soft cloth, or a paper. And that was used as the charmin of the day. And you'd always keep them and flatten them out and you take them to the outhouse and put them under a rock so they wouldn't blow away. <laughs> and then when, when the peach stuff ran out, then you went back to papers, catalogs. <laughs> That's what, what the old Sears catalogs were used for. <laughs> and you never wanted to go to the bathroom after dark. <laughs> you never wanted to walk out. You never knew when you was going to run into a skunk or something. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have a bathroom until we moved to Lost Creek, and then they put one in in the basement of the house. They put just a stool and a shower, you know, just a pipe out over the drain, and that's what we had until they. Oh, I suppose I was up in grade school before we had a full bathroom. So uh, it, uh, the we... holidays, the big, uh, the always holidays. Uh, the relatives would always come to our farm. It seemed like that was the mm -hmm. the main thing. Uh, Christmas, we always had a Lutefisk. Always fixed that. Um, and we still carry that mm -hmm. tradition on. Um, yeah, I guess Christmas was. was always the biggest yeah, it was. for you, too. Yeah. Um, your relatives always came down. They them. came from the cities. I mean, that was like, like Ma said, it was the thing. Most of my relatives, or all of them, were from the Twin City area. And to come to the farm was, that was the thing to do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, mean I don't know why, but they, but yeah, and, and, and it was the same to home. I mean, Lutefisk and Svenska Schietebiller and all that, you know, all the good stuff. You should tell, and all, you tell, know. Them, tell them what that is, though. Swedish meatballs, yeah, sure. And just in case you didn't know, Svenska <laughs> shit Anyway, that was the thing. And Christmas was the biggest holiday. Uh -huh. I mean, that was it. You know, you get together with the cousins and like Ma's brothers and brother and sister were, would come down. And uh -huh. so, yeah, I can't. That that was about it for the for the for the year. Uh -huh. Well, they would come in the summertime and visit a little too, but. Yeah. But when they would come at Christmas, why? The kids always slept on the floor. The beds were taken by oh, the yeah. adults. But oh, yeah. 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 Was, yeah, uh, so that's, yeah, that's it. 